Hi, I'm Professor Stephen Nasheba, and I want to talk to you a little bit about line drawings for uh, of conjugated alkenes. So, line drawings are a kind of a condensed way to represent um, molecules, especially organic molecules. As and as an example, I've got here. Um, it's a it's a propane uh, is the name of the molecule. You can see that it has three carbons, and uh, each carbon is bonded to four other atoms, or at least has four four bonds. Uh, in this case, the carbon has three hydrogens. This one has two because it has two carbons that are attached to it and so forth. So the line drawing of this one um, uh, is just written this way. You can kind of see that the geometry is similar to, to uh, the way the carbons are laid out. The rule is that uh, at the end of a line, that's supposed to indicate a carbon. Anywhere there's a kink in a line, like there, that's another carbon. And, and so that's, I can look at this and I can see that there are three uh, carbons. We don't draw any hydrogen that's attached to a carbon in a line drawing because it's, it's understood that there are three hydrogens attached to that uh, carbon, two there and, and three there. So the generic term for a, a, a molecule that just has carbon and hydrogen and with all single bonds is, uh, is called an alkane. And, um, and so that's kind of how that works. Uh, the, the, you know, the next, you know, um, molecule, next longer molecule like this would just be written this way. And uh, that would be butane. You can see that it would have four carbons uh, and so on. I want to move on to an alkene. And this uh, difference in the vowel here tells you that there's a carbon-carbon double bond. And, um, so here is a molecule called propene. You can see it has a, a double bond. I'm just working through how this uh, translates. I can see that there's an end and a kink and another kink. That tells me that there are three carbons here. Um, no, that, there's no hydrogens uh, drawn here because that's, that's the convention in the line drawing. But I can tell that since this carbon is bonded to two other carbons, it must have, sorry, it is, has a double bond to another carbon, it must have two hydrogens attached to it. Uh, how many hydrogens are attached to that carbon? Well, this carbon forms one, two, three bonds, so uh, it only has room for one more. And uh, finally, I have this last carbon. It's only bonded to one carbon, so it must have three hydrogens attached to it. So again, this is an alkene because it has a carbon-carbon double bond. And uh, you know, another alkene could be written like this, something like that. That would be one, two, three, four carbons, uh, and that would be called um, a variant of a, of a butene. Um, the, uh, the next uh, last idea I just kind of want to uh, talk about here is whenever you have a situation in which you have a multiple uh, carbon carbon double bonds, um, it, and when they are in the, the sequence, double bond, single bond, double bond, and so on, that is called a conjugated uh, alkene. And in this case, I can see that there are uh, three double bonds that uh, are conjugated. Um, now, the rule is, in order to call, be called a conjugated set, uh, you have to have uh, precisely this kind of arrangement. If there's if there's an extra single bond in between, then it's not conjugated with each other. So, for example, here I have two uh, double bonds. This would form a conjugated part of that molecule. This would form another conjugated part of that molecule. But um, they wouldn't be conjugated. They wouldn't form one entire conjugated uh, set. So, uh, yeah, good.